Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. We are backstage at Reading and Leeds Festival 2023. Don Broker on the lineup. Rob joins me now. How are you, man? Very good, thank you. Yeah, good. Good to see you, man. Good to good see day. you. Caught a bit of the set earlier. It is a very good day. I mean, main stage debut. You're all veterans at this festival. I, co I couldn't believe when you addressed the crowd and said it's our first time on this stage. That's mad to so me, So we man. played, we had a kind of crazy start to our Reading and Leeds journey right. where we did... Um, we did the BBC introducing stage, cool. which was, you know, our first sort of time kind of doing, I think we'd done maybe like download and right, sonosphere, sure, sure. smaller yeah, yeah, stages. Yeah. We did the introducing stage here. Then the next year we did the Festival Republic stage. And then the year after that, we were straight to the main stage. Wow. Um, and it was like one of those slots that we probably didn't really deserve at the right, time. Okay. We were playing way later in the day than we should oh. have been. And we were so un like unprepared right. and it was, it was like the biggest thing we'd ever done and it was like we came off you know almost shaking like what the hell was that um but since then um we've done i don't think it's a tent anymore the radio one tent right, yeah. um we've done that pretty much like i think two or three times Not maybe sure. which personally like i that's my favorite spot because i love the tent vibe. festival i, I love get the big tent the atmosphere you know it's like you just get instant atmosphere. Yeah. Um, and then we've done two secret sets yes. on the lockup stages, um, which also my favorite to be fair. I love, I love just coming in, you know, maybe people maybe guess it's you like a couple of hours before. Um, so we've had a great time at those, mm. but this is the first time since they've done the two main oh, stages. see, things. so it's the split thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. We, yeah, we did, yeah. When it was just the one main stage, and it must have been like, like, a long time ago, it must right. have been like seven years ago now oh, when we wow, did that. Wow. Um, so yeah, since since they've done the split thing, this is the first time we've done that. Wow. So it was, yeah, it was exciting. It kind of felt like a new thing Crowds for us. Crowds were going for it as well, man. It was nice. I mean, particularly evident, obviously, during T-shirt song, and you just suddenly saw the T-shirt spin around the head. I was like, oh yeah, this is this is people who knew what they were doing from the minute that song kicked in. That's got to be so gratifying because it's what's lovely, genuinely, about Reading and Leeds is how much the genres have kind of moved around. There's loads of different types of music, which I do think is a genuinely great thing. But it's so lovely to know when you walk out on stage, it's like, oh yeah, our people have shown up. Do you know it, what I mean? It's, yeah, it's like the first few bars of T-shirts. So yeah. you see it's, it's like, immediate. as soon as the drums kick in, people are like, oh, I know the song. Yeah. Yep, let's go. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling. Yeah, nice to have you back in the UK, of course, well, because you've just been out on the US. Massive, massive tour. What a lineup that was as well. I mean, you guys, the used and Pierce the Veil, that is a hell of a night out right there. Talk to me about touring those guys, because I know you got to jump on stage quite a few times, right, with the used and all, and doing that, and with Vic as well on one particular That night. was... That was probably one of my favorite nights, which was yeah. like a pure accident as well. Right, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, without doubt, and you know, I think a lot of bands do say this, those two bands, The Used and Pierce the Veil, are the nicest yeah, dudes in the entire world. Yeah. They're just, you know, such like kind of laid back, but fun time guys. The perfect dudes to do a long old tour with mm. as well, because we just had such a fun time. You know, it was just, we'd be, you can hang out together, you can chill together, you can have a few drinks together. They were just like, we made some really good friends on that tour. Um, you know, both those bands are just like, it's so incredible to see bands who have, you know, smashed it so hard years ago and are now smashing it even harder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all these years on. And also, you know, bringing in a new fan base yeah, as well. True. They're like, you know, it's, it's awesome to see, um, you know, they've got their hardcore fans who've, who've been with them for years and they've also got all these you know incredible new fans who you know we met a lot of people at the show and like a lot of them it was their first ever show that's so great um, and you know if they missed the opening act they came up and they were like you're the first band we've ever seen live <laughs> and we were like that is you know that's such an that's honor surreal, to have yeah. that um so the tour is amazing you know i i got to come up and do a box full of sharp objects with the used um which kind of happened by accident almost like the first time it was like a nice thing to do because our set got cut in Toronto. I see, I hadn't uh, realized that. So oh. it was like our set got cut yeah. because of the weather. We'd gone all the way there. The dudes were like, come on, let's rip a song anyway. And then we were like, let's just do this the rest of the tour. Um, wow. So, and that was again, like that song means so much to me growing up as a used fan, yeah. getting to rip that on stage with the boys was insane. Also just, practicing with them the used right. practice their whole set every night before they go on stage they are like 
I, I genuinely, I don't know. I've this, done this a while. I genuinely don't think I've ever heard of a band doing that they before. That's like, absolutely they, mad. Like they love their music them, so man. much. They that. love playing. They're such like they're such a like a core team as like mm. a bunch of dudes as well. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, we're like we're gonna warm up before we play. Why don't we just warm up together? And they do the whole set, probably not full like you know rock out. Full energy, mode. no. But, yeah. but you know they do that. So you know we'd be jamming before the set, then we go rip it. And one time, uh, yeah, I was late to stage, and uh, yeah, Vic was watching side stage, and I think Bert's looking for me. He's like, "Well, Vic, you, you're here. You might as well come on." By that point, I had people shouting at me as I was putting my ears in, being really? like, "Now's the time. You're, you're late." So I rush on, and then we're all there, and it was just this awesome moment where, yeah. you know, one of those sp spontaneous things where we all got to play it. So I love that it was, was actually spontaneous because at first I remember seeing some of the footage, like fan capture footage. I was like, "Is this a bit? Are they like, yeah. uh, God, who else could be Vic? Wow!" And you come out <laughs> like, "Is this fake?" But no, it's quite fun that it was an actual natural yeah, moment. Yeah. It just fits together so nice. You know what? I love you. Feels like a real bromance with you and Bert as well. I got to say, honestly, I love that guy. He's lovely he's dude. Just yeah lovely dude super funny just so you know so charming yeah, so yeah. nice so just chill as well yeah. you know like just a really calming presence on tour um yeah i, lo I just love the use always yeah. useful to have a calming presence on tour i find always always useful. well speaking of touring i mean i mean we haven't caught up since that massive massive tour you guys got to do over here in the uk with again just another legendary act out there i remember chatting with jacoby from papa roach before all this was announced and he sort of told me on the side he was like by the way this is happening i have never seen a man more excited to play a tour. like genuinely he was just like I love this band. I have to get out there on the road with them. That looked like such a fun experience. You must have had a that, blast with that. That was insane. You know, yeah. that was, that just, it, it it ended way too soon. Yeah. You know, this is the, the issue with UK shows. Sure. They're like, they're so much shorter than US yeah. runs. Yeah, inevitably. Annoyingly, the UK is a bit smaller than, <laughs> uh, than the States. Um, you know, Papa Roach, it was, it was crazy actually. We actually, uh, I did a show with, um, before we did our Australia tour, mm. Uh, I went out a few days earlier and I went to the Papa Roach used show and uh, did a song with Papa Roach and so they're like great. and like the Papa Roach used combo is insane as well yeah, that's like big. again I wouldn't say we got to hang out with them as much obviously as the used and pierce the veil because the, sh the tour was like four yeah, days course, long yeah. um, but from never really meeting those guys before the show just talking online again it was like this instant wow these guys are the real deal they put on that show like they they give it like 110 percent every night and you know as bands who've been doing it 20 years i yeah, think exactly, infest right? infest um had their anniversary the other the other year you know and still just like rocking out like they're not holding back they're not like we've done this before okay we're used to it it's like every night they give their all still releasing bangers and jacoby again he's just like an inspiration for me like you know just hanging out with him seeing how he is um with other all the other bands and just people around like putting in the time getting you know, photos with everyone like he's got he's literally got the time for everybody yeah. one of the nicest guys in rock and roll i think it's true isn't it like the the reason bands like that last this long and over two decades like you say it is a common thing if you're a nice person and you're one of the nicest people then then you're just gonna last it's so true jacoby just a lovely lovely dude i'm so glad to see that line he's also on. just like he's so just honest and like there's Ooh. no uh you know there's no ego with him yeah, yeah. he's he one of the, the not coolest things that i think we uh yeah we we talked about was how his his son's a massive don broco fan oh that's cool um and just growing up with jacoby as your dad yeah you know he's just like this is my dad this like it's papa roach he's not he's not wowed by that sure, in the yeah, same yeah. same way that i would be you know being a massive fan from from when i was younger so we facetimed his kid and he like lost his mind oh, that, he lost his mind that his dad was with rob from don broco <laughs> and i'm like this is like blowing my mind like, so sweet. i'm losing my shit here that i'm like <laughs> playing shows with papa roach yeah. And his son is losing his mind that his dad gets to tour with Don Broco. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, That's so nice. you know, so yeah, really, really, really nice dude. His whole family is super nice. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, man, I absolutely love that. That's so, so great. And, and again, speaking of your UK live shows, something I've got to bring up. So for the uninitiated, please explain 
Bad Boys Badminton Club because I saw the footage from Glasgow the other night. You know I'm a Scottish boy. You know I love the Barrowlands. And I saw that. I was like, yeah, there we go. It's back. <laughs> it's back. We're doing it. Let's let the people know the badminton taught me through so it. badminton it was yeah it was a happy accident really right um we years ago we played a glasgow show it got snowed off pretty half snowed off mm -hmm. uh, all the roads were closed trains were cancelled and we'd bought the badminton set and thinking this is a fun thing to do until never really actually set it up yeah, yeah we set it up before the glasgow show and just to like fill space on the floor because we were like the numbers are going to be so thin and it's right, going to be sure. weird let's just leave it set up during the show um at the time when we were playing we'd be we were playing thug workout that was like a core song in yeah. our set back then we had the push-up squad going and to replace that and give glasgow its own thing we just said let's play a game of badminton yep. worked out great uh, and it just became this kind of core part of a, a Glasgow showdown. So every time we play Glasgow, we try and break our record <laughs> of, but it's kind of hard. Like badminton, I mean, I don't play badminton. It's kind of hard. You're always yeah. trying to hit it and it's way further away. Than you I think what makes it harder <laughs> to be fair to it, is that know. if you're in the center of the crowd at say a barrel lads, there's added pressure. <laughs> that, I mean, that's, like, that's probably the main fact. There's a lot yeah, of eyes yeah. on you. So you're, you're in the, the middle, there's a pit around you. You're trying to play. We'd only ever gotten up to six, like a rally of six before, mm -hmm. yeah, this week. And then the show a few nights ago, we hit a rally of 10. Oh, there we are. So that's a new Bad Boys Badminton Club world record <laughs> right there. Um, I love so it. So, yeah, we, we love a Glasgow show. Oh, Glasgow. I mean, no one goes out than Glasgow. Always so much fun. Always so much fun. Um, we've got to reflect a little bit because I guess the last time we were properly catching up like this was around the album. And my God, the success of that, first of all. I mean, number one, let's go, let's, let's shout it out. Let's give you your flowers. Number one album. That's not to be sniffed at at all. But how are you reflecting on, on that success and on that record? Now, it's a little bit in the rear view. What were the learnings of that record? What's pushing you forward from, uh, from what you kind of learned making amazing things then? Yeah, I mean, I think it was very, you know, it was very much like a lockdown record. Sure. And I think the one thing we were so grateful for was having to have something to do over yeah. that really tough period, you know, because it was, it was a struggle for so many people in so many ways. And one thing that massively helped us through that and gave us, you know, you know, ammo to write about and you could kind of focus those emotions in doing that. Like since that and moving on, it kind of like it definitely proved us right we wanted to write like an uh, a super kind of you know uh a record that really captured like any of the, the sort of more like the darker thoughts and the, the anger we were feeling at the time something that don broker was never really sort of tapped into before um and it felt good and it kind of it opened up that side of us and yeah that slightly more aggressive side which from a live perspective as well just is so much fun to like perform live and to get that reaction from a crowd who who also tap into those feelings to sort of you know really nail that in a collective that collective angst is something you know that so many bands do you know do use and capture but as for, for us we'd never really kind of uh featured that as part of our sound so it's definitely something we enjoyed definitely something i think we'll bring to future records um and yeah as a journey as well like we probably toured this you know record maybe longer it feels like we've been on this Absolutely, cycle for yeah. a while now because we had those years without it um and it's kind of again like just confirmed how important live music is you know to us as a band and 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 you know to our fans so um it's definitely something like i think it's it's really nice that we got that number one and we're stoked we got it but that's not what it's about like it's it's about it's about it's about the shows for us you know the actual kind of stress we went through when, as soon as we had found out we had a chance of getting that number one record honestly it can shoot like those yeah. i guess it was only re in reality it was probably a month of like super hard graft yeah. you know but 
I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> I just want to be on the road playing shows. It's like. nice. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about. But it's nice to see. I mean, that is just a testament to the community you've built around the band, isn't it? It's a testament to that live following, in fact, that they want to support you and they want to buy the record in that way. So it's always, yeah, it's a lovely celebration. But I appreciate not exactly why you do it. Well, not why anyone should do it. Absolutely. It's the love of it. Um, how are we looking in terms of what might come next at this point? Are we already thinking about that next record? Yeah, we're, we've kind of, we've started writing. We've okay. got a few demos floating back and forth that we're excited about. We've got, um, we've got a few songs that are kind of pretty much done now. Oh, great. We've got one song completely done, which we started, kind of we had the idea for on the, on the last record. Uh, which is going to be coming super, super soon. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, and it's kind of, again, it's something, it kind of feels like it could be part of the last record, but again, it's got something a little bit different to it. So we're excited for people to hear that. Um, and yeah, I think we're like, we're excited to just kind of almost like really sign off this chapter of our lives um, by getting some like, you know, some sick tours under our belt. We've got a few things planned. So. Um, and then, yeah, probably next year will be the time where we really start cracking on with, right. like, let's let's dive into this new record process because, Absolutely. you know, we've got so many demos floating around. We need to sort of refine it and give it that structure to work out what the next iteration of Don Broker will be. But there's so much going going on at the moment. It's like. I could see the next album literally being anything right now. So. Ooh, <laughs> that's exciting, though. That's a nice, nice place to be, man, for sure. Well, congrats on the show today. Always great seeing you live. Always great chatting. And yeah, we'll catch up again soon, I am Thank sure, you. man. Thank you. Good to see, see you, ya. Rob, everybody. Yeah.